Hello, and welcome to the PC America Reseller Training Series. My name is Adam Moore, and I'm the sales engineer that will be conducting today's training. Today, we're going to be discussing Restaurant Pro Express. Let's get started. When you first click on the software, this brings you into your login screen. On your login screen, you have three options on your top right. You have Manager, Help, and Exit. Manager allows you to make any kind of back office changes or any adjustments that need to be made in the software. Help stores all of our FAQ knowledge, so if you're struggling with any aspect of the software, you can refer to our help menu. Exit. Exit allows you to exit out of the software. Below these three options, we also have the ability to set any kind of logo, brand, or any picture to your liking. Below that, we have a time clock. This time clock allows you to clock into the system. Now there are two methods of clocking in, and that is either using the touch screen with a unique identifier you have assigned to the employee, or they can use an access card, which is another product that we offer. So if you're interested in purchasing an access card, you can contact your account manager. On the left here, we have a number pad. This is the number pad that we use to log into the software. In the software, the defaulted ID and password is 01, and the password is admin, A-D-M-I-N. Let's log in now. 01, enter, and as I mentioned, the password is admin, A-D-M-I-N. Enter. Now this is your table layout screen. This is the screen that you can customize to your restaurant. This is the layout of your whole establishment. At the bottom of the screen here, as you can see, I have three sections created. I have a bar section, a dining section, and a fireplace. In order to create these different sections, you must hit Edit Layout. Edit Layout opens up the screen so you can add all these different objects into the system. So let's type in our password now, A-D-M-I-N, and let's hit OK. So as you can see, the screen is now open. I can now move any of these objects that I want any position that I want. I could also insert multiple tables, any kind of circle, square, rectangle, any kind of circle objects into the system. I could also delete any of these tables that I, as long as I have it highlighted. Also when you have a table highlighted it opens up a couple options at the bottom of the screen here. You can set the number of seating per table. You can also have the ability to set a profit center so you can tell which section is most profitable. You can also increase the size of the table if you need to, or decrease the size of that table. Let's hit Done. Options is the same as your manager screen. This allows you to make any kind of back office changes or any adjustments that need to be made in the software. You can also utilize the software for quick service, so we have the ability to do takeout orders and delivery orders as well. Open tabs. Open tabs is a way to authorize a credit card and open a tab for a customer. When you authorize that tab, it will also take the first initial of the customer and the last name. Quick tab is the fastest way of getting into your menu screen. But to show you how the tables work, we're going to occupy a table and then go into our menu screen. So we're going to occupy table number 8 and select a party of 4. After we select a party of 4, this will bring us directly into our menu screen. Now this is your menu screen. This is going to be the screen where the server or end user is going to be logged in for 90% of the time. This is where they're going to be finalizing their payments and cashing out their customers. Now you notice that we select the party of four. When we select the party of four, it shows you the guest in the middle right here. So we have guest one, two, three, and four. This allows us to select our items by guest. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So now I can select guest 1 and ring up an item. I can select guest 2 ring up another item. Guest 3 and guest 4, another item as well. So now we know what each guest is getting. So that's why these numbers appear here. On your top left here, we have our departments. And on the right, we have our items in those departments. We also have a blue cursor, which follows you around so you know which department you're currently in. As you can see, I also have some of my products here color-coded, which makes it a lot easier for my servers to locate my items. So as you can see, I have my salads in green. Under my entrees, I have all of my meats in red. 
all of my seafood in blue. It just makes it a lot easier for my servers to locate the items. And that is done in your touchscreen configuration screen. You also have the ability to position these buttons in any order that you want. You can also alphabetize or hide any of these products here. And that is also done in your touchscreen configuration. At the bottom of the screen here, we have hot buttons. Now there's over 45 different functionalities that you can set in the software, but only 16 buttons that occupy the screen. Again, that is also done in your touchscreen configuration. A little later on, we're going to cover that screen. To the right of that, we have look up customer, check, edits, send, and pay. Lookup customer allows you to pull up any customer that you're tracking in the system. Let's say maybe you have a loyalty plan or a loyalty program associated with a customer. The system has, is fully capable of tracking any loyalty plans or loyalty programs you have associated with any of the customers you have added into the system. If you hit Lookup Customer, this also allows you to add customers on the fly and sort through all of your different customers. You can also edit a customer if you have them added into the system. Check. Check is prints out a short receipt so you can hand it to the customer. This receipt will show them exactly what is currently being rung up. If the order has also not been sent to the kitchen, it will also print a copy to the kitchen as well when you hit check. Send sends the order directly to the designated area where you have the printer set up. And the reason why I say it like that is because you could have multiple sections of where your orders are going. You could have a bar printer, you could have a kitchen printer, you could have a salad printer, entree printer. And that's why I was saying, you know, when you send an order, it's going to go to the designated area that you have it set to. Edits. Edits allows you to manipulate the order that is currently being rung up. When you hit edits, this shows you a bunch of options that open up. Let's cover these options now. So when I hit edits, in order to get out of the edit screen, you can hit undo edits. Void item. If you're voiding an item out of the system, Keep in mind, this is a feature that cannot be reversed, so if you're voiding something out, make sure it's your final decision. That also coincides with void invoice as well. Keep in mind, any voids that you do in the system is tracked and recorded in your invoice totals report, option number three. A little later on when we cover reporting, I'll show you what I mean by that. We also have the ability to comp any orders. Good reason, if we hit the comp button, we'd have to highlight the product to show you how we can comp the order. So let's highlight the lamb sausage. Let's say maybe the customer didn't like this or was, un was dissatisfied with their order. You can hit comp and then say did not like, and it'll comp that order or that item for that customer. Back into our edit screen. Discount. We have the ability to discount our products, and we have the ability to discount either by percentage we also can create coupons in the system so we're not locked down to discount percentage so we can create coupons for the dollar amount or percentage. Guest number. This is to select a guest if you have the wrong order selected for that guest. So I'll show you what I mean by that. If I highlight duck spring rolls, I don't want to change this to guest one, I can do so. So I'll highlight the order, select guest number, and select it to and change it to four. As you can see, it changed my duck spring rolls to guest four now. Back into our edit screen, we have change party size. Now we have the ability to add to a party size, but not to deduct from a party size. Options, again, this is the same as your manager screen. This allows you to make any kind of back office changes or any adjustments that need to be made in the software. Apply gratuity, you have the ability to apply gratuity directly on the invoice. It'll also show you that gratuity that has been applied for the amount and you can apply gratuity either by percentage or the dollar amount. Split check. Well, as you see, we have the ability to select our items by guest. So now we can split checked. We can split the check either by guest or evenly. We hit split by guest, it separates it accordingly. We can combine all, puts it back all into one invoice, and now we can do split evenly. And now we have a party of four, so we can split it four ways.
There you go. Again, combine all, put it directly back onto the same invoice. Back into our edits menu. Transfer and combine. Transfer and combine allows you to transfer a table and combine a table together. Okay, this allows, let's say you have two parties and two parties in the same, uh, same side of your restaurant and now they maybe want to sit together. You can take that table, transfer all the items or orders to that other table and then combine all the orders together. Transfer server. Transfer server allows you to transfer a server if the server has an emergency and needs to leave or let's say the customer uh, isn't satisfied with their server that, that's been serving them all night. You could transfer your server if need be. Reorder round. Reorder round is a great feature, especially in the bar establishment. I'll show you what I mean by that. Let's hit undo edits and show our menu. Let's go to our bar menu. So what we're going to do is we're going to start ordering some drinks here. I'm just going to show you how the reorder round makes life a lot easier when ordering drinks. So let's delete these items off screen. And now let's ring up a couple of beers. Let's like an Amstel for guest one. Guest two is going to get a Bass Ale. Guest three will get a Blue Moon. And guest four will get a Dos Equis. So now we're going to send the order to our bar. All right, bar makes the drinks, gets the order. You know, table now has their drinks. They finish their drinks. And now they want to order another round. So to order another round, it's very easy. I'm just going to occupy the table again, select table number eight, and all I'm going to do is highlight the items and select reorder round here or in my edits menu. Now when I hit reorder round, it's automatically going to reorder that for me. There you go. So it makes it a lot easier as opposed to going back into your bar menu, selecting the guest, and then going back in, selecting the beer, and then selecting your guest again, and then selecting the beer. Just saves you that extra step when using the reorder round feature. As you can see, the software is developed for speed, so you can get the customer in and out as fast as possible or get them their order as fast as possible. So this is why we have that reorder feature. Select menu. In the system, you have the ability to create multiple menus in the system and have them appear at a given time. So let's say you have a breakfast menu, a lunch menu, and a dinner menu. You can have these menus set on a scheduled time. So let's say your breakfast menu is from 6 to, 6 to 11, and then from 12 to 5 is your lunch menu, and then from uh, f maybe uh, from 5 to 10 is your dinner menu. Now, as long as you have them set accordingly, those items will appear at the given times you have it set in the software. So when you hit select menu, all the different menus that you have created will populate in this screen. Void invoice, as I mentioned, is a feature that cannot be reversed. So make sure when you're voiding something out of the system, it is your final decision. Again, that is tracked and recorded in your invoice totals report, option number three. Resend to kitchen. Resend to kitchen. Uh, let's say maybe a customer put an order in and they wanted to maybe at the last second say no onions. That would be a reason why they can resend the order to the kitchen or maybe it was made uh, not the way the customer wanted it. Okay, that would be another reason why they resend to kitchen. Pay for future pickup. Find order for pickup. Now, as I mentioned, you can utilize the software for quick service. So the software has the ability to do deliveries and, uh, deliveries and uh, takeout orders. Once the order is created and paid for, you can locate that order in this screen here. You would then select the order and then pay out the customer as you would. Pay button. To show you what the pay button looks like, I'm going to hit pay, and this brings you directly into your amount tender screen. At the bottom of the screen, we have quick dollar amounts. The last dollar amount always rounds up to the nearest dollar. In the middle here, it shows you all the different tenders that we offer. So let's close out a transaction. Let's close this out to cash. Let's hit OK to that. Would you like to print a receipt? We're going to say no because currently we do not have a receipt printer connected. It brings you back to your table layout. So now you can occupy your next table.
So now let's select another table, select a party of four, and go back into the menu screen. So as you can see, we have all these products in the system already. Now these products need to be entered in here somehow. Now these products are entered into the system through department maintenance and inventory maintenance. And that is done through your manager screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit manager, administrator number five, and letter A, inventory maintenance, and letter B, department maintenance. Now these are going to be the two screens that you're going to be in to create all of your products into the system. First, we're going to click on department maintenance to start adding all of our departments into the system. So I'll hit department maintenance. Now this is your department maintenance screen. This is going to be the screen where you add all of your departments into the system. At the bottom of the screen here, we have ways that you can navigate through your departments and also look up all the departments you have added in here. So if you hit look up, it shows you all the departments you currently have in the system. Category for this department. Category for this department is meant for more detailed reporting. Now on the restaurant side, you know, you have multiple, uh, we have multiple types of categories that you can create. So for appetizers, entrees, desserts, you know, that's all considered food items. Now for the bar, you have wine, liquor, and beer. That's all considered alcohol. So the category for those three departments would be alcohol. Again, category for this department is meant for more detailed reporting. So you know exactly what you sold out of that department and category. Department ID can be, used as, can be set as any unique identifier that you want, but keep in mind that you're allowed only eight characters. Department description. Department description allows you up to 30 characters. So when you're entering your department description, make sure you have it in there the way that you want because this is what's going to display on your touch screen or your menu screen. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add a department into the system. At the bottom of the screen, we're going to hit Add Department. We're now going to create the department called Burger. Now, I can duplicate my burger and my description as the same if I wanted to, as long as it's under eight characters. Which it is. So as you can see from my department ID, I left it at burger, and department description is also burger. I left the category for this department under food. I'm now going to hit save. Your department has been added. Would you like to add another? We're going to say no for now. But now let's just backtrack on what we did. So for department ID, we set as burger. Again, this can be, be any unique identifier that you want to set. Keep in mind that you're only allowed eight characters. Department description is what's actually going to show on your menu screen. So make sure you have this in here the way you want it to appear. And in order to add the department, all we did was hit add department at the bottom of the screen. So now let's put an item into this department that we just created. So again, we're going to hit save changes to commit our changes. And now exit out. Once we exit out, we're going to go next door to inventory and maintenance. Now keep in mind, all your maintenance screens are all under administrative. So again, letter A, inventory maintenance. Now this is going through the screen where you enter all of your products into the system. Keep in mind, we do have an alternate method of, of entering your products, and that is called a menu creation. Basically, we ask you for a hard copy of your menu, we then program that menu into the software, and then upload it to your machine. This way, all the hard work is done for the customer or end user, and the customer can start utilizing the software to start making their money. That is also another service that we offer. Now, the top section here, this is the general information that is required for an inventory item when adding it into the system. The middle section here is optional information that can be set or enabled on the product. The bottom section is how we navigate through our items in inventory, and this is also how we add our items into the inventory. Previous and next are your slowest ways of navigating through your inventory. Lookup is your most fastest and efficient way of looking up all your products. When you hit the lookup button, you have the ability to sort by category, department, and vendor. You can also type in the first couple of letters of a product and, and pull it up that way as well. This middle section here, now these, these middle tabs are... Um, are, are not specific to uh, the restaurant side or retail, but we're only going to cover the ones that are specific to the restaurant side. Special pricing. 
Okay, we have the ability to do sales pricing either for the dollar amount or percentage. Bulk pricing, we use this for two for one or buy one, get one. Time based pricing, which is most important um, for special pricing, is your happy hour. You can use your time based pricing for happy hours. So let's say you have a happy hour from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Let's say that your happy hour starts at 4 p.m. and it ends at 6 p.m. All of my drinks I'm going to make are going to be half off, so I'm going to say $5. So now it shows you from Monday through Friday, all of my drinks between the hours of 4 and 6 will be $5 for this product. But after 6 o'clock, all my prices will go back to normal. Sales history. As long as there, the item has been sold in your system, there will be sales history based on that item. Recipe. Now, recipes can be used to can be used to complete an order. So, let's say you have a burger. You can now track the bun, the meat, the tomato, any ingredients that were used to complete that order. That is called linking your inventory together. And you use the recipe in order to do that. Printers. Very important. Now, when adding your printers, my recommendation is to have the printers and drivers already installed in the computer before you start adding all of your inventory. This way, you can start associating the printer of where it's going. So for my appetizers, I can have my kitchen printer, or let's say for my bar, I'll have my bar printer. So when I hit Add Printer, it comes up Bar or Kitchen. So as I mentioned, it's just a lot easier if you have the printer already installed. So this way you don't have to go back and set that printer you know, for all your items in inventory. You can just set it right there and then as you're adding it into the system. We also have the ability to, to, to use a bump bar, which is a screen that sends your orders. So if you decide to go green and don't want to use a receipt printer or waste paper, you can always use a bump bar. Price levels. In the system, we have over 26 different price levels that you can set in the system. So let's say you're a restaurant, and let's say you want to give all children a 25% discount. And as you can see, it changed my price to $750 for the product. And I also enabled the price level for C. Let's say also for senior citizens, price level S. You want to give them another, you want to give them a 25% discount. Hit enable, and you can do the same. Now to show you how these quickly work, I'm just going to exit out of the inventory maintenance screen to show you how these work with the customers. Okay, because you have to set these levels per customer so they can get it at that price. So in order to do that, we're going to exit out of here, and hit save, exit out of here, go into customer maintenance, and right here where it says price level. You have A through Z. 26 different price levels that you can set. So anybody that's a children or let's say a senior citizen, you can mark them now as either S or C. Let's exit out of here, back into our inventory maintenance screen. Modifiers. Modifiers are very important. Modifiers are basically your product prompt. So a good example would be when you create a burger into the system, you know, you want to be prompted how that customer wants that burger cooked. And that is a, usually a force modifier because a lot of places, unless it's, you know, it's a, it's a chain restaurant or a fast, fast food restaurant, you know, they'll cook the burger one way. But most places, as a restaurant, you have the option to have your burger cooked you know, rare, medium, medium rare, well done, and so on. You would use modifiers in order to have that product prompt. Notes. You have the ability to put any kind of special note for any, for any item that you have added into the system. Let's say maybe it's made with... Uh, you know, peanuts or high peanut allergy. You can add that note into the system if need be. So now what I want to do is I want to add an item into the department that we just created called burger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit add item at the bottom of the screen. And when you hit add item, you have five types of items that you can create into the system. That's a standard item, coupon, choice item, combo, and modifier group. Now, standard item is going to be your regular standard inventory that you're adding into the system. Coupon, as I mentioned, you have the ability to create a dollar amount or a percentage, and you're not locked down to that discount percentage button on your menu screen. 
combo. On the restaurant side, you can use this for a combo meal. So you can do burgers, fries, and drink. And when you do a burgers, fries, and drink, you know, it'll calculate that, you know, it'll calculate each piece of inventory you've added to that combo, but you also have the ability to set an override price. So this way, you're not charging $15 for each calculated item, but you can set maybe the override price to $10 for the whole combo. Choice item. A good example for a choice item, let's say you have a button called burger. Then once you hit burger, all your different burgers will populate from there. So you would have a bacon burger, Swiss burger, cheeseburger, hamburger, and so on. Modifier group. Again, you know, this is used to have a product prompt. And to show you how these work, we are going to cover how to create a modifier in the system. But first, let's create our standard burger into the system now. So we're going to hit standard item. And we're going to select a department that we created, which is called a burger. There it is. And now, I'm going to add my burger into the system. So let's say cheeseburger. And let's say for this cheeseburger, maybe it cost us $5. Price you charge, let's say we're going to charge $10 for this cheeseburger. We're also going to mark tax one because that's the tax that we have enabled. So we're going to make sure tax one is enabled. And as long as it is enabled and tracked, it will also calculate your price with tax. Now, because it's a cheeseburger, we're not actually keeping track of the actual cheeseburger, but the ingredients that are used to track, uh, the ingredients that are used to complete this order is what we're tracking. So we're going to uncheck count this item. When you uncheck count this item, the inventory is no longer being tracked. So your inventory item will not go into the negatives or positives. It'll stay the way it is or whatever it's set as, as long as this option is unchecked. So now let's hit save. Your item has been added. Would you like to add another? We're going to say no for now. Now let's take a look at what we just did. So we're going to hit save. And we're going to exit out of here. We're now going to exit out of our manager screen. And now we're also going to exit out of our menu screen just so the screen can now refresh. I'm now going to occupy a table, table number eight. Let's say a party size of one. There is my new department called burger. And there is my cheeseburger that I just created. So if I hit cheeseburger now, it comes up just like that. Now I'm a restaurant and I cook my burgers many ways. So I want to have a modifier on this cheeseburger so I can get prompted of how my customer would like their cheeseburger cooked. So now we're going to go back into our inventory maintenance screen and create that modifier group. So now we're going to go to manager, number five, administrative, inventory maintenance. We're now going to click on add item. We're now going to click on modifier group. Now, when creating modifiers, this is back-end work, so you don't ever really want to show any of this work. So we have a department created called Mods No Show. So when you hit the drop-down arrow, you'll see an, uh, a department called Mods No Show because, like I said, this is back-end work, and I just want it to work with my cheeseburger. I don't want to show all that other work in there. So Mods No Show, I'm going to save it to. And we're going to call this item Burger Temp. And the prompt we're going to say, how would you like your burger? And now we're going to hit save. Your item has been added. Would you like to add another? We're going to say yes, because now we want to add our, all of our individual modifiers into this uh, burger temp that we just created. So your item has been added. Would you like to add another? We're going to say yes. We're going to select a standard item. We're going to leave departments for this item as mods no show because, as I said, this is all back-end work. So the first one we're going to create is going to be medium rare. And because we don't charge for the temperature of the burger, we're going to uncheck tax one, but we're going to mark the item as a modifier item. Now this separates it from all from the rest of our standard inventory items. This is now considered a modifier item. 
Your item has been added, would you like to add another? Now we could duplicate last so our changes can stay the same. So hit duplicate last. And as you can see, my modifier item is still there and my tax one is still unchecked. So now I could just change my item number and description. We'll call this one medium, hit save. Your item has been added, I'd like to add another, we'll say yes. Standard item again. Okay, and we're going to say rare. And again, we're not charging for the temperature, so we're going to uncheck tax one. Mark the item as modifier item. Hit save. Your item has been added. Would you like to add another? We'll say yes. And we'll do one more call well done. Again, uncheck tax one. Mark the item as a modifier item, and now hit save. Your item has been added, would you like to add another? We're going to say no for now. Now we're going to go into our lookup button, and now we're going to hit modifier groups. When you hit modifier groups, it shows you all the different modifiers, you have all the different modifier groups you have added into the system. So again, we're going to click on burger temperature, and add all of our individual modifiers that we just created. So add modifier, we're going to locate all the different modifiers that we just added. So we created one called medium rare. We also created one called medium. We also did well done. And we also did rare. So now we can actually position these in any way that we want. So let's move the rare all the way to the top. Medium rare, medium, and well done. So now we're going to take this modifier group and apply this to our cheeseburger. So now we're going to hit save. We're now going to go back into lookup and look up our cheeseburger. There it is. All I did was I typed in the first couple letters of my product and it pulled it up. So now I'm just going to double click on the product. And there it is. I'm now going to click on modifiers. Make sure that I have group selected and add modifier group. I'm now I'm going to select burger temp, which is the one that we just created. Would you like to charge for items in this group? We're going to hit no to that. But keep in mind, you do have the ability to charge for modifiers. A good example, let's say you have any kind of add-ons or add-offs. Okay? Now, we just created one for burger temperature. I could also apply another modifier, which is called add-on and add-offs, so it would prompt me you know, what, would they, what would they like on that burger or cheeseburger. Now, we're going to also make sure that this modifier is forced because we want to get prompted how this burger should be cooked for the customer. So we have this marked as forced. We're now going to hit save. We're going to create one more modifier group just to give you a feel of how, how it's going to work. You know, I just want to show you, you know, how, how everything is put together. So we're just going to hit save. Exit out of here. Exit out of our menu screen or manager screen. Hit delete. Exit out so the screen can refresh. Let's hit quick tab because we just want to go quickly into our menu screen. And there's my burger. So now, when I, as I said, you know, I, don't want, I didn't want to show any of that back end work, you know, all those individual modifiers that we created. So this is why it looks nice and clean. So now when I hit my cheeseburger, it should just work. So cheeseburger. And there you go. How would you like your burger? So let's say I want my burger medium rare. And now the kitchen knows that the burger should be cooked medium rare because it's sent to the kitchen in red lettering. So now let's go back and apply another modifier group to this item. And this is going to be considered an add-on or add-offs where we can charge or not charge for anything that we want to take or put on that burger. So let's say manager, number five administrative, letter A, inventory maintenance. We're going to hit Add Item, Modifier Group. Again, we're going to put this in Mods No Show because this is back-end work whenever you're creating any kind of modifiers. And we're going to call this Add On, Add Off. And for the prompt, 
we're going to say, what would you like? Now we're going to hit save. Your item has been added. Would you like to add another? We're going to say yes. It's going to be a standard item because it's just a regular standard inventory. And now we're going to create our individual modifiers. So we're going to create one called pickles. And let's say for pickles, let's say extra pickles. And for extra pickles, let's say we want to charge a dollar for that. And again, we're not going to be tracking the pickles, so we're unchecked count this item. So we can leave the stock, or if we wanted to check it, or keep track of how many pickles we have, we can do so by making sure the item is set as count this item, and then adjust, and then uh, setting how many pickles we have in stock. But for now, I just want to show you how the modifiers work. So we're going to uncheck count this item. So this way our inventory doesn't really get adjusted. So extra pickles, we're going to charge a dollar for that, but we're also going to mo uh, make this uh, modifier item and make sure that tax one is enabled on the product because we are charging for it. So we'll hit save, and now we're going to add our next. So now we'll say no pickles. We'll say no pickles. And because we don't want pickles, the price is going to stay the same. We're going to uncheck tax one, but mark the item as modifier item. Hit save. Your item has been added. Would you like to add another? We'll say yes. And we'll do onion, and then we'll do one more called no onion. So add so standard item. Let's say onions or extra onions. And for the extra onion, it's going to be 50 cents. And again, we're not tracking the extra onion, so we're going to uncheck this. Just to show you how the modifiers work all together. All right, and mark the item as modifier, but also uncheck, uh, uh, but keep uh, tax one enabled because we are charging for this one. So we'll hit save. Your item has been added. Would you like to add another? We'll say yes one more time, and we're going to do no onions. We're going to uncheck tax one, mark the item as modifier item. We're now going to hit save. Your item has been added. Would you like to add another? We're going to say no for now. We're going to hit save changes one more time. And now going to look up back into our modifier groups and look up our add-on and add-off. There they are. Let's double click it now. And now let's add our individual modifiers that we just created. So add modifier. Start looking for our onion and no onion. So there's onions. Oh, that's right. We had extra. That's right. Extra onions, extra pickles. Then we had no pickles and no onions. So now we're going to hit save and also apply this to our cheeseburger. So we're going to hit save. And now hit look up and look up our cheeseburger. Here's my cheeseburger. Double click on it. Pulls it up in my inventory maintenance. And now I can apply this to my cheeseburger now. So modifiers. And I already have burger temperature. So I'm going to hit add modifier group. Now I'm going to select add-on and add-off. Would you like to charge for items in this group? Yes. As you can see, we already have our prompt set here. And for the add-on, add-off, we're not going to make this forced because if they don't want anything, they can just bypass the screen. So we do have charge for modifiers enabled. So now we can do, we can hit save and show you how these different modifiers are going to work together with this one product. So now we're going to exit out and ring up the cheeseburger. 
exit out of the menu screen so it can refresh. We're going to hit our quick tab to get back into our menu very quickly. Burger department, hit cheeseburger. Comes up, how do I want my burger? Let's say medium rare. And let's say now I want extra pickles with no onions. Hit select, and that's how it's going to show up on your screen. Cheeseburger, medium rare, no onions, extra pickles. As you can see, it's charging for that one modifier. So now, let's go back into our manager screen. Number five, administrative. And now let's go into letter E, customer maintenance. We need to have customers that can purchase our products. As you see, we were able to add our products into the system, but now we need customers to purchase these products. To create these customers, that is done in your customer maintenance screen. So letter E, customer maintenance. Now when entering a customer into the system, the only required field is the customer number, first name, and last name. I highly recommend entering the email address as well because the system does have the ability to do mass email. Let's say you're offering any kind of promotion at your restaurant, you can fire off an email to all of your customers that you have that you are tracking their emails. Extended info. We have the ability to store credit card information, driver's license information, their mobile information as well. Account info. Account info allows you to create two types of customers into the system, either a standard customer where you can bill them a monthly statement or a layaway customer where they're paying off their balance and in installments. If you are shipping a billing to a customer, you have the ability to track that information as well. History. As long as, the, as long as you've been tracking the customer and they've been ringing products or purchasing products, they will have sales history based on what they've bought. Notes. Any kind of special note for the customer. Maybe this customer is allergic to peanuts or uh, maybe there's a special uh, direction for this customer when they come in. You can set a note there if need be. Stores. Now, the system is fully capable of working with multi-locations. In order to work with a multi-location, you need a web portal. Now basically your, uh, your database is hosted on a secure website where every location is now sending and pulling information to that secured website. Now this is the reason why you see the 1001 because as you have more locations this number will change. So let's say you have location 2, that's going to be 1002, location 3, 1003 and so on. Now because we only have this one location you're only sh it's only showing 1001. The software also has the ability to track the loyalty plans and loyalty programs, but keep in mind, if you're using more than one location, um, you will require a processor. But if you have one location, the system is fully capable of handling everything internally. Discount percentage. If you set this discount percentage, moving forward, they're going to get all their products at the discount percentage that you have set here. You also have the ability to charge at cost and tax exempt any customers as well. You also have the ability to associate loyalty plans and loyalty programs with the customer, as I mentioned. In order to create these different loyalty plans and loyalty uh, programs, you have to exit out of here, go into setup. Letter C, customer loyalty. Now when you hit customer loyalty, you have two options, loyalty incentives and loyalty plans. You want to create the incentive first and then the plan. So let's hit loyalty incentives. When you hit this drop down arrow, this should show you all the different loyalty plans you have added into the system. Let's hit add now and add a loyalty incentive into the software. So we'll hit add and we're going to call this one free voucher. Now you also have different incentive types that you can offer. So a birthday bonus gives you a little brief description of what it details. Gives customer a free or discounted item for their birthday. Frequency discount gives a discount to a customer who shops at your, at your uh, establishment often or maybe a customer that uh, comes in every Friday night for the same meal. Okay, Maybe on their 10th visit you can give them uh, a comp. And fire coupon. This allows you to create a coupon in the system and then give this coupon to the customer when they're eligible for their reward. 
in most cases, most customers are using points to reward. So we're going to call this description free voucher. And for the points required to receive the reward, we're going to say it's going to be 100. We're also going to make the voucher value for $5. We're now going to hit save. Very easy. So all I did was I entered the description as free voucher. I marked the reward as free voucher. And I put the points, however many points are required in order to get the reward, which is 100 points. And I made the voucher value for $5. So now let's hit update. And now let's apply this loyalty incentive to the plan. So we're going to exit out of here. Go back into setup number 4. Letter C, customer loyalty. And then loyalty plans. Now we're going to hit add at the bottom of the screen. And we're going to call the description the same as the incentive that we created. So free voucher. We're now going to hit add incentive. There's the incentive that we just created, so we're going to select it. We're also going to mark the incentive as prompt. We're now going to hit save. We're also going to mark accumulate points because we want the customer to accumulate points so they can receive the reward. And the reason why we mark this as prompt so the cashier or server is prompted when the customer is eligible for the reward. So now that we have this created, we must now apply this to a customer. So let's exit out of here, create a customer and customer maintenance, and apply that to a customer. So we're going to hit Add. And when creating a customer into the system, my recommendation is to use their telephone number. Um, again, you do have the ability to save an access card or any kind of uh, uh, loyalty card you know, that you want to assign to the customer. But let's say they lose that card. okay? other way to look them up, the most easiest way to look them up is by looking up their phone number. So in this case, I'm just going to put in my number here. I'll say 845-920-0800. My first name, let's say my name is Adam. Last name, Mora. And my email address, again, as I said, you know, when you're entering a customer into the system, if you can, track their email address because, you know, if later on you want to enable the mass email features, you can do so. So email address is going to be PCA test at PCAmerica.com. I'm now going to hit save. I'm now going to hit the loyalty plan in the middle of the screen here and associate the loyalty plan with this, cu with this customer. There it is, free voucher. And now I'm going to hit update one more time. So I've now applied the free voucher loyalty plan to my customer. Now in the system, there's two ways to accumulate points. You can accumulate points by points per item or earning bonus points per dollar amount. Let's exit out of here and show you how we can accumulate these points. So we're going to exit out of here. We're going to hit Setup. Letter G, Setup Screen. Invoice Settings on your top right. Second column over, Earn Bonus Points for Dollars. Hit Update. Now this means when they spend $20, they're going to get 20 points. They spend $50, they're going to get 50 points. Okay, That's what Earn Bonus Points for Dollars. The other way to accumulate points is by enabling a points per item. So let's hit update and I'll show you, show you what I mean by that. Update. Number five, administrative. Letter A, inventory maintenance. I'm going to scroll over to another product. And as you can see here in the middle section here for optional information, we have bonus points. And in here, you can set however many points you want. You can make it 100 points if you wanted to. You can make it 10 points, 5 points, whatever you want it to be. Now, a reason why you would use it this way, let's say um, you want to mark all of your appetizers a point, okay, so, and then you're also tracking your customer. On their 10th appetizer, you know, they can get a coupon or a free voucher that gives them a value. Let's say maybe $10, $10 towards their next uh, visit when they come, okay? You know, if, if you have an incentive, you know, it's just a great way to get repeat customers. So to, let's show you how this loyalty plan is going to work all together.
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select my customer, Adam Moore, there he is. And now I'm going to bring up some products. But in order for me to get my reward, I need to accumulate over 100 points. So let's bring up some, some items now. Let's at least bring something up that's going to be over 100 bucks. All right, we'll say 120. So we should get about, uh, we should get uh, one, 120 points for this uh, order here. So we're going to hit pay. We already have the, we already have the uh, customer selected, so we're going to hit pay. And let's hit cash. Would you like to print a receipt? We're going to say no for now. And now we can go back in here and occupy a table and show you how we accumulate our points. So now we'll occupy table number eight. Say party size of one. Now let's select our customer. Look of customer, Adam Moore. So it shows you that I've earned 120 points. So now when I ring up another product, it should flag me letting me know that I'm eligible for my reward. So let's just say I want to get a Caesar salad, oil and vinegar, let's hit pay. As soon as I hit pay, it should flag me letting me know that I'm eligible. There you go. Bonus available, type points reward, bonus free voucher. Would you like to apply this? Let's hit yes. So if we move the screen out of the way, it shows you that we're not charging for the voucher, but it's giving you a free voucher for $5 with a value of five dollars. Now this will print on a separate receipt with a barcode. Another thing I wanted to show you is now that we used a hundred of those points, okay, now that we used a hundred of those points because we've redeemed our voucher, it's going to deduct that hundred out of our out of our bonus points. So we're going to hit no to that, we don't want to print a receipt, and I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So this is printing out my little voucher now. I'm just going to cancel all that. So to show you how many points I have left, okay, we're just going to hit look up customer, Adam Mora, double click, and now it shows you that I have 28 points because we originally had 120 points, okay? Now we used 100 of those points, but we had 20 left over, and the last transaction was for $8, so that's why we have 28 points left over. And that is how your, your customer loyalty plans work. Now that we've added some customers into the system and showed you how the loyalty plans work, we need employees to ring up these customers. In order to add these employees into the system, we need to go into our manager screen. And as I mentioned, all your maintenance screens are under administrative. So number five, administrative. Letter F, employee maintenance. Now employee maintenance, this is going to be the screen where you add all of your employees and where you limit them of what they can do and what they can't do in the software. When adding an employee into the system, the only required fields are employee ID, password, display name. As I mentioned in the beginning of the training, access card is another product that we offer. So if you want to assign any access cards to your employees, you can do so. And if you're interested in purchasing those access cards, all you'd have to do is contact your account manager. When you hit this drop down arrow, this shows you all the different employees you have added into the system. Previous to next allows you to navigate through all of your item, uh, through all of your employees in the system. The bottom of the screen is how we add our employees into the system and set up different job codes for the employee. Now, job codes are um, I like to use it as their entitlement of what they do on your establishment or restaurant. A little later on, we're going to cover that and how that works. When entering an employee ID into the system, you're allowed up to four characters. Now keep in mind, as I mentioned, you know, the 1001 shows you which location that you're working. The software, again, has the ability to ha handle multi-location, so this is why it shows you the prefix before the ID. You'll have the ability to have your employees work at multiple locations that you own. So when you have more than one location, the next location will be 1002, you know, 02 or 01, you know, whatever it's going to be. But you'll be able to have your employees work at any, at any location that you want as long as you make that adjustment on the web portal. And again, the web portal is you know, a great tool. It allows you to make any kind of back office changes from any location as long as you have internet, and it allows you to control um, all locations. Password, the password can be set as any unique identifier that they want, maybe the last four digits of their social security, 
Okay. Uh, display name could be anything that, uh, that they want to be called or a nickname. Uh, do keep in mind that you do have the ability to store personal information on your employee as well. All right. And as I mentioned, you know, card swap IDs, you know, that is a product that we offer, and you can purchase these if you're interested, you know, from your account manager. You also have the ability to make the employee a customer in your restaurant. This way they can purchase products at a discount, or you can maybe, you know, enable certain discounts with, the, with your customer uh, so they can be, you know, ring, ring up their items any way, uh, you know, that you, feel, that you feel fit. You also have the ability to set an hourly wage. Below these uh, options, below these uh, sections here, you also have checkboxes. Disable this employee, take credit card tips and cash at the end of the shift, require a clock in before login, administrative card access. Now, to disable this employee, the system does not allow you to, to delete an employee out of the system if they've ever sold anything out of the system. It only allows you to disable them if they are no longer working there or if you fired them. Take credit card tips in cash at the end of the shift. Software has the ability to track the credit card tips per employee. Require clock in before login. Great tool, great feature. I say this only because uh, this, this requires the employee to clock into the system before they can ring any sales. Administrative card access. Again, you know, access cards you can assign to your employees, and by enabling this option would give them administrative card access throughout the software. Below these checkboxes, we have a couple tabs. We have permissions, personal info, job codes and wages, store associations, and payroll info. Permissions. Now, under permissions, we have a bunch of functionalities that you can set for your employee. Now, this is where you can limit them what they can do and what they can't do in your system. You have pages 1, 2, and 3. Now, when setting up your employees, you are going to want to make sure that you do go through all of these functionalities. Keep in mind, if you highlight a functionality, it gives you a brief description of what the functionality does. One neat feature about the functionality is that you have the ability to track any functionality that you set for your employee. A good example would be Open Cash Drawer. Open Cash Drawer is one of those functionalities that a lot of managers are iffy about giving their employee. But what's neat about our software is that we have the ability to do log as exceptions. This means that anytime this cashier or employee or server opens the drawer, it'll log this in a report. If you'll notice, I'll highlight hold and print. Check mark disappears. Sell non inventory item, no check mark. Open cash drawer, check mark because I'm keeping track of this functionality. And again, you are going to want to make sure that you go through all of these functionalities because. Certain functionalities such as end cash, transa end cash transactions, you know, that has to be set to yes if you want them to close out a regular uh, 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 order for a customer, okay? Um, if you want them to be able to issue a credit slip or redeem a credit slip, you know, you want to make sure that's set to yes. End transactions, you know, completely, you know, uh, you want to make sure this is set to yes as well, you know. Just make sure that you do go through all of these functionalities. Now, if you want to lock them from going into your inventory, your customer maintenance screen, viewing your reports, going into your setup screen, Okay, you can do so by locking them out by setting all of these functionalities to no. Now, restaurant features, you know, this is specific to the restaurant side, so you are going to want to make sure that you go through these features and functionalities. When you hit the drop-down arrow, you have yes, no, prompt, and override. Override allows them to have manager access throughout the software. Prompt requires a manager to come in and put in their password so they can do that functionality. No means they cannot do that functionality, and yes means they can do that functionality. Personal info, as I mentioned, you do have the ability to store this personal information if you need to. Job codes and wages, uh, um, this I like to use their entitlement of what they do in the restaurant. So let's say you have someone that's working in the kitchen. Let's say you have a server. Let's say you have somebody that's a bartender. Okay, these are different job codes that you can assign in the system so you know exactly what position they're working at night or whenever they're clocking into the system. So in order to create a job code, job codes and wages, we're going to go into our job code setup at the bottom of the screen here. So let's create a job code. So in here, we have a couple created already. We have kitchen and we have server. So for kitchen, as you can see, I've accessed the POS unchecked. 
Now, the reason why I have this unchecked is because I do not want anybody working in the kitchen being able to go into my cash drawer or ring any sales. I want them to only utilize the software for clocking in purposes only. And I can do so as long as this option is unchecked. I also have my default wage and my default overwage set. As you can see, I have my shift report set to zero. I have all of my other check marks unchecked as well. But for server, that I have created here, I do have access to PayWest because I want them to be able to finalize sales and cash out my customers. I also have cash bank enabled so I can have a cash bank so I know what I'm starting my, cash, my servers off with. As you can see, I have my number of copies of my shift report set to one. This is a report that will automatically print out when they clock out of the system. This will also include department totals and itemize all of their credit card transactions. And again, as you can see, I've set my default wage and my overtime wage as well. Now let's hit update. So now, let's apply these job codes to an employee and clock in with that employee. So for Melissa, we have applied to her kitchen and service. So when we clock in with kitchen, we should not be able to go any further than the login screen. So let's log in with Melissa now and show you how that's going to work. I'm also going to update her password so I know exactly what it is, 02, so that it's actually the same as her ID. So I'm just going to exit out of here, exit out of our manager screen, exit out of our menu screen, exit, of our, exit out of our table layout screen, back into our login screen. So now we're going to hit the blue and white time clock, as I mentioned, you know, one method of clocking into the software. And we're going to type in our password. So 02, enter, 02, enter. We're now going to hit clock in. We're now going to select kitchen. Now, after I select kitchen, I should not be able to go any further because I only want this, cash, uh, this, uh, this person that's working in the kitchen only utilizing the software for clocking in purposes only. So kitchen, clock in successful, hit done. So now if I try to log in with her, 02, 02, I cannot go any further. You are currently working job code kitchen and may not log in. That's because, as I said, I don't want anybody working in my kitchen being able to access my register for any reason. So now, let's log out with Melissa and log in as a server. So again, we're going to clock out with her, 02, enter, 02, enter, and now we're going to clock out. Now let's clock back in with Melissa, but this time as a server. Clock in, and now we're going to select server. Let's say I'll be working the bar section. Now let's hit done. So now when I clock in, I should be able to go further, and I should be able to occupy a table now. So we're going to clock in, 02, 02. And there you go. I'm able to log in. Now I can occupy a table and finalize my sales if need be. So it's just an extra step of uh, security. You know, if you don't want anybody in your kitchen or maybe any of your hostess, uh, or, you know, if you have any hostess in the system as well, you know, you don't want them ringing sales or going into the register for any reason, just keep in mind that they can utilize the software just for their hours and wages only. Let's just clock back out with Melissa. 02, enter, 02, enter. I'm going to clock out. All right, now it comes up with this here because I have my shift report set to 1. So this way it's automatically printing my receipt. So I'm just going to cancel on that. Now hit done. And that report would include all my department totals and itemize all of my credit card transactions that I've done for the day. Now let's go back into our employee maintenance screen and take a look at those clock ins and clock outs that we just did. So we're going to go into our manager screen. And in this screen, our password is on the top. So we're going to type in admin on the top and 01 at the bottom. We're now going to click on number 5 administrative and letter F employee maintenance. Now we have two, time, two, two ways that you can get to this time clock. All right, time clock is also under administrative, letter J, time clock management, but it's also under employee maintenance as well. So when you hit time clock management, this will show you all the clock-ins and clock-outs that, we, that we've done for the day. 
Now, what's really neat about this feature is that you have the ability to go back and change the start and end date. But in order for you to change the start and end date, they must be clocked out of the system completely. So let's say I want to get I want to give this person some more time or this employee more time. I can go back in here, and let's say I want to change this to one. Okay, click out of the screen after I made my change. You'll notice that my time has gone up. My wages that I earn is ten dollars and eight cents now, and it also shows you the job code that I'm currently working. Only a manager can make these uh, changes. Exit out of here. Now, store associations. Store associations, okay? As I mentioned, you know, the software can handle multiple, multiple locations. Now, the, it, to associate your employee with multiple stores, this is a setting that must be done on the web portal. This way, all your employees can work at any, any uh, location that you have. Payroll info. System now has the ability to export our information or payroll information to Payroll City, which makes payroll a lot easier for the end user. Under time clock management is where you would go to set up your payroll export. So under payroll export, you have payroll export setting. You would then configure this with the information that's supplied to you from Payroll City. And one other feature I wanted to mention is you also have the ability to set a picture for your employee. So if you have a picture of all of your employees, you can set that in the system as well. Now that we've gone through our employees, we also have the ability to schedule our employees so they cannot work, uh, you know, whenever they want. You know, they can work at a scheduled time that we have set. And we could also enable the scheduler to, as, um, as a way so they can clock in after or before the time that they are assigned. And that is your label scheduler, and we must enforce the label scheduler in order, for, in order for it to work that way. So let's save changes. Let's exit out of here. And let's go into tools number three. So tools number three, letter B, label scheduler. Now to use this screen is very simple. A couple things I want to bring to your attention is that you have the ability, once you create a schedule for all of your employees, you do have the ability to copy the schedule for the next month. This way you don't have to redo the schedule all over again. If you have multiple job codes in the system, you could also filter by all those job codes, or you can just show all of your employees you have added into the system. So let's say for Melissa, we want to set her up. So we want to make her work from 5 to 1. It is very simple. You're literally going to click on the starting point and drag it to the end point. So we're going to click at 5 a.m. and drag it to 2 p.m. Or maybe even 1 p.m. Let's say 1 p.m. So as you can see, it shows that I'm working 5 a.m. to 1 p.m. Now, one other thing I want to bring to your attention. In order for you to commit your changes, you must hit search. Very strange, but it is going to be fixed. But um, for now, in order for your changes to take effect, you must hit search. So now let's say I want to create a schedule for the 11th. Again, click on the starting point and drag to the end point. Hit search to commit your changes. And now it shows you that we have a schedule set for the 10th and the 11th. There you go. Now another neat feature is if you highlight the section you have assigned, it opens up the bottom of the screen here, which allows you to assign certain breaks. So you can do a lunch break, let's say maybe a cigarette break or a bathroom break. Okay, you can schedule these breaks accordingly. But it must be within the given time that you have them assigned for that day. Now, as I mentioned, you know, you can have it set so they can't clock in before or after the time that you have them assigned. Now, in order for it to work that way, you must enforce the label scheduler. In order to do that, we're going to exit out of here. We're going to go to setup number four, setup screen letter G, and system access. Once you get into system access, we're, going to, we're then going to click on the third tab over, which is labor schedule settings, and enforce label scheduler. Now use punctuality. This means that you can have it set. So you can set a little window for your employees so they can so they can clock in either you know five minutes or ten minutes after the time that you have them assigned. Now when you use punctuality, this opens up these fields.
And this is where you would come to enforce the label scheduler. So now that we've mentioned how to add our employees into the system, we've gone through our inventory items, uh, how to add departments, you know, how to ring a sale in, you know, how to um, how to do modifiers and how to associate our modifiers with our products. Next thing I want to talk about is going to be reporting. So let's exit out of here, and we're going to go to number five, administrative, letter L, reporting. Now this is your reporting screen. This is a screen that has all of your reports and it has over 75 different reports. Now we're not going to cover all of these reports, but reports that are specific to the restaurant side. So as I mentioned, when you're doing any kind of voids out of the system, that's tracked and recorded in your invoice totals report. When you hit display, this gives you three options. As I mentioned, option number three shows you your voided invoices. When you highlight a report, it gives you a brief description of what the report details. It also opens up certain criteria so you can see what is open on that report. So let's say I have invoice totals report, you'll notice select cashier is open now. But if I select a different report, everything is now grayed out. On the right here, we have a start date, start time, end date, and end time. If you double click in the field, it pulls up a calendar. Same thing with the time, it pulls up a little time frame for you. On the top right here, we have advanced reporting. Advanced reporting is another service that we do offer if none of these reports here fit your needs. So if you feel that none of these reports are able to assist you with your sales or tracking your inventory or anything like that, Keep in mind that we have the ability to create reports for you. Again, that is another service that we do offer, but if you have a background with SQL or Crystal Reporting, you can utilize this function on your own. Keep in mind you will need an enterprise license in order to use this feature. <clears throat> As you can see, we have reports broken down by these categories here on the left, inventory, customer, employee, restaurant, and rentals. Now, a couple major reports I'm going to talk about. I'm going to be under sales first. So, as I said, invoice totals report, you know, you hit display, you have three options completed invoices, on hold invoices, voided invoices. <coughs> Excuse me. When you open the report, this shows you, shows you all the information very descriptive. You have your date and time, store ID, the invoice number, customer number, cashier ID. <clears throat> the payment method, the total cost, and what tax was charged. You also have the ability to export these reports out of the system. And when you hit export report on your top left here, you have multiple extensions that you can export to. Next report I'm going to move on to is your detailed daily report. Your detailed daily report closely resembles your end of day report. The only difference is that you have the ability to select a start date and end time for this report. You also have the ability to break this report down by cashier or by station. And you also have the ability to enable certain, uh, certain uh, options on this report as well. As opposed to the end of day, if you haven't ran your end of day for three days, it's going to run that report for all three of those days that it has never been ran for. Detailed daily report, you can set the date and time of when you want to run this report. And as I said, you have the ability to break it down by cashier or by station. And you also have the ability to set a start date and end time. Detailed department sales. Very important report. This report here is your product mix report. <clears throat> when you hit display, let's hit all sales. This will show you all of the items that you sold out of the system and out of those departments. And as you saw, we have more than three departments in the system. But it's only showing us the three departments we sold items out of. Again, you have the ability to export the report for any reason. Let's say maybe you have a third-party uh, accounting software. You can export it out of our software and import it in there if need be.
Next report I'm going to move on to is your general hourly report. <clears throat> I like to use this report uh, a couple ways. You know, this report can be used to, you know, tell when's your busiest time. Okay, it also shows you the, the apartments that you sold out of, the amount that you sold out of that apartment, and how many of those items that you sold out of there as well. Okay, now if we had more uh, sales ringing for, t for the times here, all right, we can base this off, you know, how, how, how we should have our staff scheduled. All right, so if we know from between the hours of, uh, of 8 and 6, okay, uh, you know, it's, not, it's, it's, it's pretty busy, you're making a lot of money, uh, you know, around that time, then you want to have more scheduled staff. But maybe between the hours of uh, 6 and 10 or 6 and 11, you know, it's really dead. So then you really need to have only two or three people on, okay? You can use the support a couple ways. And you could also export the support if you need to as well. Daily gross profits. Pretty self-explanatory. If you are doing gift cards in the system or doing loyalty, loyalty plans, you know, keep in mind the system can fully handle that internally. It's only once you have more than one location, it, is, it will require a processor. Receipt listing. Receipt listing is if you need to reprint a receipt for any customer. Let's say uh, you have one of those customers that needs to receipt for everything. Okay, let's say, oh, I lost my receipt for the 8th. As long as, uh, you know, you, you were running sales for the 8th, you know, you will be able to generate a, uh, a, a list of all of those receipts that were done on that day and then print out the receipt accordingly. Returns. You don't really have to worry about that on the restaurant side. You really don't have too much food that gets returned. <clears throat> Daily close reprint. This is your end of day reprint, basically. As I mentioned, if you do not run your end of day, let's say you've never ran your end of day for, let's say, five days, okay? It's going to run your end of day for all five of those days, and then moving forward, your, your, then moving forward your, your totals will be fresh, and your machine will be Z'd out. <clears throat> payment type breakdown, pretty self-explanatory. Just, just give you a breakdown of all the payment types that you have taken. Financial summary. Similar to your end of day report, only difference is that you have the ability to set a start date and start time. Only difference. Now, as I mentioned, invoice exceptions and operational exceptions. These are the two reports that you would use to track the functionalities of all of your employees that you have added into the system. Now, an example of an invoice exception would be any kind of void, any kind of line item delete, or a discount that you're tracking. Now, operational exceptions would be anything, anybody that goes into the cash drawer or goes into reporting or goes into your inventory maintenance, that's considered an operational exception. So just keep in mind when you're tracking these features that you have to use both these reports depending on what you're tracking. <clears throat> Last report I want, uh, next report I want to talk about is your flash report. Now, this is a quick figure report so you know exactly where you are for the day. And for what it is, it's very detailed. So let's hit display. <clears throat> And it shows you, you know, what we've taken in net sales, net sales tax, net sales not tax, exempt sales, any liability items that were sold, um, what you've taken in cash, checks, credit and debit, EBT, on account, or any tenders that you do, that you do take. Next category I'm going to move on to is your inventory. <clears throat> A couple important reports is your list alphabetical, list numerical, list numerically. These two reports are your, are your full inventory list. And also gives you a current inventory value. So let's hit display. <clears throat> and as you can see, these are all the departments that I've added into the system. So this is going to give me all of my departments and all of my items. The last page will always give you your inventory value. And again, if you need to, you can export the support, as I mentioned, for any reason need be. You have your current value, which is the same as that. Is the same. Your current value is pretty much the same as your <clears throat> is the same as your uh, list alphabetically or list numerically. Just that this is just a quick figure uh, uh, post. So when you hit current value, you hit display. That's all it's going to show you. <clears throat> you have your top sellers report for your items for the, that you're selling the most. And if you are tracking your items, if you're transferring items from store to store, you know, you do have the ability to run reports based on that as well. If 
you're curious to know what a specific item and how a specific item is selling and how it's doing, you also can run a report based on that and set a start date and start time as well. Next report we're going to move on to, if you are tracking customers in the system, <clears throat> we can pull reports based on account receivable, summaries, or any kind of open account receivable. If we scroll down, we have any open account receivable invoices. You also can pull up their customer history as long as, they, um, as, long as you've been tracking them. You can also export a phone and email listing if you need to maybe fire off an a email blast to all of your customers that you're tracking. Okay, you can print, print that out, uh, you know, out of the system or export that out of the system if need be. Employee. Very important. Uh, as you can see, we, you know, I, I mentioned that we can utilize the software just for clocking and purposes only. <clears throat> okay, so if we hit hours and wages, okay, it's going to show you all the, different, all the different people that are clocked in. Now, we only clocked in with Melissa, so it shows you that I work job code kitchen and also work job code server. Also shows you what I've done in my total sales, cash tips, credit tips, overtime wages, and wages earned. <clears throat> and we also have an employee listing. Now summary is pretty self-explanatory, it's just a summary instead of, you know, it's pretty much the same as your hours and wages report, just that this is a summary. <clears throat> if you're tracking server tips, you have the ability to do so as well. Employee history. Employee history, as long as you've been tracking or ha had the customer add into your system, you can pull up any history as long as they have, you know, they sold any items or anything in that nature. Restaurant. Now, as you can see, we, ha we have a couple of reports in here. Number of people served, server tips, which is the same as the uh, same report under employee, server tips. <clears throat> Ingredients, theoretical usage. As I mentioned, you know, we have the ability to track... Uh, the ingredients that are used to complete an order. So let's say, you know, when you're, create, when you're ringing up a burger, you can track the bun, you can track the tomato, the lettuce, uh, the meat itself, the cheese, you know, whatever you use to create that order, you would run this report to track those ingredients. And for delivery tracking statistics, this report here, you know, uh, we have, as I mentioned, the software can be utilized as a quick service. So we can do <clears throat> delivery orders and takeout orders if need be, and then track those uh, statistics as well. Now, the last report I want to cover is going to be your end-of-day report. But we're going to cover that more towards the end. The next thing I want to move on to is your touchscreen configuration. <clears throat> this is the screen where you can come to create those hot buttons at the bottom of the screen, color code, and position, pretty much customize your menu screen to the way you want it. So we're going to hit setup number four, letter J, touchscreen configuration. Now, on the general side, this shows you basically the layout of our menu screen. We have our departments on the left, our items on the right. We have our invoice, uh, invoice list on the, on the right here, as you see, and then our couple buttons at the bottom of the screen here. <clears throat> now, as I mentioned, there's over 45 different functionalities that you can set for these hot buttons. Now, you can only occupy 16 of these buttons that you see. There's only 16 buttons here, so make sure when utilizing these uh, 16 buttons that you are sure that that's what you want to use them as. You must also have this latest button checked off and also have the caption reading what, <clears throat> what the uh, functionality is. So this way you're not confused. As I mentioned, you have the ability to create scheduled menus in the system. Items and departments. Now this is the screen where you can position your items any way that you want, your departments or your items. You can alphabetize all of your items in a specific department. You could hide departments, okay? Because as you can see, you know, I, I, my Mosmo show is a department that I have hidden. So when I highlight it, you'll notice there's no check mark there because it's not displaying on my touch screen, okay? But if I highlight appetizers and soup, all right, there's a check mark there because this is showing on my touch screen. Now this is how, and just to hide something, you basically would highlight it, uncheck the button, hit save and exit, and now that whole department is hidden with those items in that department. You also have the ability to drag and drop your departments any way that you want. And to color code, very simple. We have all these colors here. If none of these colors are to your liking, then you can create your own custom colors. <clears throat> now, 
You also have the ability to set pictures for your buttons as well. So if you hit select, you know, as long as you have your picture stored on the machine, you can select them accordingly. Same thing for the items as well. So now let's hit save. And just to show you, you know, what that would what that would have looked like, you know, if we were to have our modifiers on screen. So mods no show. Okay? This is what the screen would look like. I'm just gonna hit display. And I'm gonna hit save and exit. <clears throat> I'm now going to hit quick tab so we can get into our menu screen you know, quicker than just occupying a table. And now, when I hit my Mosno show, this is what it would look like. Okay? We don't want this showing on the screen because this is all back-end work. We want it to look nice and clean just like that so it works with the product when we select it. So again, to hide that department, Manager, Setup, Touchscreen Configuration, Items and Departments, Mods no show, and uncheck display department on touchscreen. And once you have this unchecked, it will also hide all the items that are in that department as well. Save and exit. Exit out of here. Now to refresh the screen, because now I, I, I again, uh, I hit this department. So let's exit out, refresh, go back in the quick tab, and now it's gone. Now, as I mentioned, you know, color coding is very important. Now, I can show you how important it is, okay, because I color coded all my meats, I color coded all my seafood, all my salads, and so on, okay? So let's say somebody, by, you know, just by accident, it, it, it can happen. So let's go into number four setup, touchscreen configuration, items and departments. Let's go to my entrees. Now, I'm going to hit alphabetize. Now, once I hit alphabetize, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make everything in alphabetical order, so my colors are not going to be next to each other anymore. Let's hit alphabetize and show you what I mean. <clears throat> so, you know, this does, you know, it can happen, but, you know, as you can see, you've got a prompt. Are you sure you would like to alphabetize? You know, in that case, you would just hit no. But, you know, it can happen, but just to show you how important it is to color code your products, you know, it, it just makes it a lot easier for them to locate it. So let's hit save and exit, and now let's go take a look at our entrees. So let's exit out of here, back into quick tab. All right, so now you can see it has now been my screen all jumbled. But even though it's all jumbled, I still know what is meat because all my meats are programmed in red and all my seafood is programmed in blue. So it does not affect me. So yeah, you know, it is, it, it is a shame that it's not together anymore, but at least, you know, I'm not completely lost. I still know what is what. So that's how color coding can be beneficial, you know, to your servers or uh, to your servers. waitresses. The last two things I want to show you is uh, the last report I did want to mention was the end of day report. <clears throat> and the reason why I saved that for the last is because it works together with the, with the uh, backing up the database. And, you know, backing up the database is very important. So I wanted to do these two together so I can show you why they work together. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out of here. And I'm going to show you where we can run our end of day from. But I want to show you an option that we have to enable so this way you avoid, you know, any discrepancies later on. So number four, setup. Letter G, setup screen. We're now going to click on payment processing. Now just to keep in mind, you know, the software does have the ability to do tips. So under payment processing, this is where you would come set up your tip information. Other options. <clears throat> now the feature I wanted to show you on here was perform batch settlement on end of day. This means when I run my end of day report, it will automatically settle my credit cards for me. You know, we've had in the past where customers call in, you know, it's been a couple months, I haven't received my money, I don't know what's going on. And this is because, you know, yes, they're running their end of day, but not settling their credit cards. Okay? Now when you do your credit card settlement, that can be a separate... Uh, process altogether. And I'll show you what I mean by that. But first, let's enable this option so when we run our end of day, it'll automatically settle for us. So check mark <coughs> and hit update. Now, two places where we can run the end of day report under tools, number three, and letter O, end of day. All right. Now, to manually run the credit card settlement, that's under administrator number five, letter K, credit card settlement. You then just hit settle.
But we're going to go to the first screen or a login screen and run the end of day from there because that is the other location where we could run our end of day report from. So we're going to exit out, exit to login, and we're going to hit file. Now we're going to hit end of day. We're going to put in our password, which is admin on the top because this is a manager functionality. You can give your employee the ability to do this, but that's your call. Zero one, enter. Our expected deposit is 179.76. And we're going to hit OK to that because that is our expected deposit. Is the amount correct? 179.76. Yes, it is. And at this point, it's not going to settle my credit cards. It's not going to print out my end of day. I'm just going to hit cancel this because I'm actually not going to print this out. And now my end of day has not been completed. Very simple. You know, this way you avoid that whole discrepancy of not, you know, of not having to settle your credit cards, you know, on its own. But by enabling that option, it'll automatically settle it for you when you're settling, well, when you run your end of day. Now, last thing I want to show you guys is how we back up the database. We're going to hit File, Database Maintenance, Backup Database. Now, this is very important. I can't stress this enough. I mean, throughout all my trainings, I'm sure you hear how much I stress this, but it is very, very important. It can be very painful if the customer has to start from scratch, but by making these backups every day, you know, after your end of day has been ran, you know, you have the most recent information, and they can continue working if their system goes down for any reason. Now, when you make a backup of the database, it's recommended to make that backup on a flash drive, external hard drive, or even off-site. Now, to do the backup is very simple. All you're going to do is click File, Database Maintenance, Backup Database. You're not going to type in your admin password, A-D-M-I-N. Enter, and then our ID is 01 at the bottom, 01, Enter. It is strongly recommended to make a credit card settlement before backing up the database. Have you settled your credit card transactions? Well, we just ran our end of day and we enabled that option. So yes, we did run our credit card transactions. So we can hit yes to this. It's not going to ask me where I want to save my, my backup. Now, at this point, I don't have an external hard drive or a flash drive connected to my machine. So I'm going to save it to my desktop so later on, when I connect my flash drive, I can literally just drag and drop it onto my flash drive. So I'll select desktop. I'm going to call it the backup today's date so I know exactly when it's from. 7-10-2013. I'm also going to give it a little timestamp because I like to make uh, I like to make multiple backups throughout the day, so I don't know exactly when this one's from. So 4:31 p.m. We're now going to hit save. It's going to take a couple seconds, and now my database is backed up. Very easy, very quick. There's no reason why why database backups should not be made. You know, it's just there's no reason. So please stress to the end user how important it is to make these backups and get them familiarized with making these backups, especially after running the end of day. This now concludes our training on Restaurant Pro Express. I hope you guys enjoyed the training. Looking forward to seeing you on the next one. Have a great day.